Hello and welcome to another Excel tutorial from the IT service. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at conditional formatting. Now conditional formatting is one of those tools actually pretty simple. Highlight some cells, go to conditional formatting on the home tab and say show me when these values go above this value or below that value and it does. But with a little bit of thought we can get conditional formatting to do a little bit more for us. Let me show you where we're going to go with this tutorial. The data I have here comes from the Met Office, www.metoffice.gov.uk. It shows us annual rainfall year by year since 1910. Thought of this because I'm sat here in torrential rain, can't go outdoors, chickens can't go outdoors, everything's a bit miserable, and it's been like it for weeks. So I thought, wonder if it's getting drier year by year or wetter year by year. So here's the data first step is going to be to add a threshold. Let's switch tabs. On this sheet here, if I type in a threshold, I'm going to see the years when the rainfall didn't meet that threshold, when the annual rainfall was below it. But, as you can see, if I type my threshold in, it doesn't just highlight the cell containing the total. It highlights the entire row. That makes it much easier to see when that figure is met. If I change the threshold again, to a thousand. No, nope, no more. All right, let's have a thousand and fifty. There we go. Lots more rows meet that criteria. So you can see how clear it is when a year has had particularly low rainfall because the entire row gets highlighted rather than just that one cell in the right hand side. So that's our first step. We'll take a look at how we do that. And then with a single line of VBA code, we're going to add a little bit of visual control as well. On this third tab in my workbook, you can see I've got a little scroll bar. And I can scroll to the left or to the right. And it changes the value in my cell here. And so it gives me a nice visual way of being able to say, show me where the threshold is, this value. Rather than having to type it in, I can just use the control instead. I can still use the typing value. I can still type in 1050 and get it to highlight those rows doesn't take that away but it just means that I've got an alternative nice visual way which will appeal to some people so that's where we're going with this how do we do it well let's kick off here's the sheet that hasn't got any conditional formatting in it yet now the basics of conditional formatting are simply that I select the cells with the values I'm interested in I say go to conditional formatting on the home tab highlight cells and if I say greater than there we are greater than pop in a value here, maybe 950, and you can see in the background cells that meet my threshold are highlighted. Or I can say, if I cancel that, conditional formatting, highlight cells between, so between 1000 and 1050, and again on the right you can see that certain cells have been highlighted because they met my criteria. So that's the basics of conditional formatting. But I want to highlight the entire row. There are several steps to this. Firstly, I have to highlight the entire row's data before I go to conditional formatting. Like any formatting, it only applies to the cells you've selected. So my first step is to select all the data that I may want to highlight. I start in cell A5, my top left corner. It's important to know where you've begun, not just sort of a cell randomly in the middle. So A5, down to the bottom, across to the right. Scroll back up to the top and now I go back to conditional formatting. I want to create a new rule but I'm going to write it myself so clicking new rules and then I'm going to use a formula to determine which cells to format. When I use a formula I type the formula in here and it will return either true or false and anything where the formula returns a true will be highlighted as I specify at the bottom of the box. As with any formula, I have to start with equals. And my basic idea is I want to highlight the row where the total rainfall over here is less than my threshold in here. So let's just type that as a starting point. Equals this value here, my total, is less than my threshold in here. And that would work perfectly for this first cell, the one that's highlighted here, the white cell on the left, top left in A5, that cell there will now go whatever format I choose if the condition is met. But here's the thing, 
we have to make sure it always looks at the right set of figures. Look at again at the formula. E2, that's my threshold cell, if we call it that. There we go. E2 is this cell here where I'm going to type my threshold. This threshold is always going to be in cell E2. It's never going to be typed anywhere else. And that's why it's right that the dollar symbols are here. Excel's put these in automatically. The dollar symbols make it an absolute reference, meaning E2 is a fixed cell, E2. That's fine. But it's not right that N5 should be fixed as well. Why? Well, N5 contains my rainfall figure for 1910. My rainfall figure for 1911 is in N6. For 1912, it's in N7. So I don't want to say, always look at N5, because otherwise every row will be highlighted if N5 specifically meets that threshold, is less than 1,000. I want to say, check every row, row by row. So don't always look at row 5. I take the dollar symbol out, preceding the number 5 here, so it now says $N5, so that I'm checking each row in turn, not always checking row 5. What about column N? Well, column N is always the cell, always the column, that contains my total rainfall figures. So when it looks, when Excel looks at all these figures here, I always want to look at column N, the total, but just not always row 5. So I've made row 5 not absolute, I've made it relative, but column N is always the total rainfall column. So I do want that to be locked. So I'm going to leave the dollar symbol here before the N to say always look in row N, but don't always look in row 5. Change it year by year to 6, 7, 8 and so on. So this is the formula I need. $N5 is less than $E2. So one more time, always look in column N, but look in a different row each time, and it highlight it where it's less than, always look in E2. That's always the fixed cell for my threshold. What do I want to do if that is met? I want to format those cells in a particular way. Now you can do what you like here. Uh, if you want Barbie pink, you can do that. Uh, I wouldn't let you on any of the courses I run. We don't allow Barbie pink. But I can pick whatever color I want. I'm gonna go for a kind of nice, subtle green color. That's the, uh, actually that's the font. I don't want the font being green. So I'll go for bold and black. But for my background color, that's where I meant to have a nice subtle green color. There we go. Click OK. That's what it'll look like if the figure for the year is less than the threshold. Click OK. And there we go. I'll just deselect and you can see that 1921, that figure there is less than the threshold. All the others are above. Change the threshold. Show me where it's below 1,050, and rather more years meet the threshold, so those entire rows, those cells that I selected, go highlighted. That's pretty cool. I like that. I think that's quite useful, much more so than the original idea of just saying, highlight these cells. What about the visual stuff? I wanted to have that little slider here to say, let me scroll to the left and scroll to the right. Some people are very much more visual, and just the idea of having a little control there that I can scroll might make that a little bit more appealing to that kind of person. In order to see this, these controls that you can add to your spreadsheet, you need to have the developer tool turned on on your ribbon. The developer tool is available to everybody, but isn't there by default. So if you can't see the developer tool, the way to turn it on is anywhere along the ribbon, right click, customize the ribbon, and in this dialog box, just make sure you've got a tick here on the right hand side in the developer checkbox. Once you've done that, click OK, and then you'll have this developer tab on the ribbon, and what we want is to insert an ActiveX control. Make sure you do use the ActiveX control, the newer ones, rather than the form control. And we could use uh, this one, a scroll bar, or if you don't want the actual bar in the middle that you can drag, you just want arrows left and right, we can use what they call the spin control. But I'm going to go for the scroll bar. So I click on the scroll bar, and just click and drag to insert it where I want it. So there's my scroll bar. Now I need to set some properties for that. For example, when this block is at this end of the scroll bar, what value should be in here? And when it's at this end of the scroll bar, again, what value should we have? So to set those properties, I make sure that the scroll bar is still selected. I click on Properties at the top. 
and I set the properties in here. The first thing I want to do is set a name. Now, this may not be absolutely required, but if we had several scroll bars in our file, it just makes it easier if we know what they're called. So I'm going to call this SCR as a little prefix, so I know it's a scroll bar, and I'm going to call it Threshold. Then the two properties I need to set are the minimum that the scroll bar can represent, and I'm going to go for 850, and the maximum that the scroll bar can represent, and I'm going to set that to 1300. don't think there are many years below 850 or above 1300. And finally, I'm going to set one more here. And the other one I'm going to set is, and I can't see it at the moment. I love it when that happens. OK, the other thing I'm going to set here is the, one, the small change property. And the small change property is the property that lets me specify, when I click the arrows at the end of the scroll bar, how many increments by each time. So I'm going to say, when I click the arrow, jump by 10. So it goes from 830 to 840 to 850 to 860, and so on. So I've set the name, the maximum and the minimum, and the small change property. Once I've done that, I simply close the properties window and those properties will have been saved. Finally, I double click on this and that takes me to the code. And the code for this is actually pretty simple. If you've never done any programming before, this is about as simple as it gets. The basic idea, I'm just going to go back to Excel for a moment, just using the uh, button at the, at the bottom on my taskbar. The basic idea is that I want to set a value into this cell, this is cell E2, matching the value that I'm getting in the scroll bar. Yeah, so I set E2 to the value of this scroll bar. That's all I'm after. When I go back to my code, I'll just double click again. This is code that will run whenever this scroll bar, SCR threshold, changes. So I haven't got to worry about where to type it, I just type it where the cursor is already flashing. And I said set E2. Well, we get to a particular cell by typing range, and then the name of the cell in brackets and in quotes, you've got to have both. E2, close quotes, close brackets. I want the value of E2, dot value, to be set to the same as the value of our scroll bar, which we know will be between 850 and, or is it 1250 or 1350, I forget. So, SCR threshold dot value. That's it. That's literally all you've got to do. You haven't even got to worry about hitting save. I can save it here, but if I forget, if I just close this window and go back to Excel, if I save my file in Excel, it'll be exactly the same as if I'd saved the file in the code window. You know, the two parts of the same file. So, let's give it a go. To test it out, I've got to tell Excel I'm no longer designing this, I want to use it. So on this developer tab, click the design mode button to take it out of design mode. You see the handles around that scroll bar disappeared. And now, as I scroll, I go 850, 860, 70, 80, 90, and gradually we start hitting values where our threshold is met, and it colours in the rows. I can drag the scroll bar. I can still type my values in. I can type a value that's outside the threshold of the scroll bar. Or I can use the scroll bar. And there we go. Conditional formatting to make your workbooks much more dynamic, to make the highlighting much more interesting, and make it much clearer when values are met that you've set for your conditional formatting. Well, I hope that was useful. I hope you found that interesting, and it'll give you something to think about next time you come to use conditional formatting. If you'd like more tips, don't forget, have a look around the website, www.theitservice.co.uk, or give us a call. Thanks for your time.